All right, now to online password cracking. Okay, so let's say we have again this uh, old friend of ours, Windows 10 virtual machine, and uh, we have to remotely guess passwords for it, right? So let's go to our console and uh, let me introduce you to uh, two very um, efficient tools that do that, okay? So there are there are many ways to online uh, guess passwords for systems, but um, these two basically give you the most coverage, right? And uh, remember that uh, sometimes you most probably will encounter a service that does not allow you to use these uh, universal tools, okay? So you will have to script your um, brute forcing or password guessing uh, script, yeah, you script your program that will do that. Uh, for that you will uh, most probably require some knowledge of the protocol that the service uses and uh, all this uh, can be uh, found online most probably if the protocol is not really proprietary and closed. Uh, however, in most cases you will uh, you will get uh, the most of these universal tools and uh, I will show you Hydra and the Ancrack. Hydra is uh, one of the oldest ones and it's still in maintenance so it's uh, updated regularly and then Ancrack of course is uh, some kind of a substitute for it that comes with the uh, nmap and uh, first let's start with Ancrack syntax. Okay so yeah it's louder rather a large file that is really similar to nmap uh, help message right so here you have almost the same target specification and service specification and timing uh, specification authentication options output uh, formats and so on so everything is really nmap like except for these modules that you can specify either by just uh, setting uh, this uh, notion of port number here after colon, right? Or by specifically passing this uh, name of the service before the IP address, right? So let's just uh, review the examples that uh, will show us the difference from nmap syntax. So dash v of course just makes the output verbose, which is the same as nmap. Uh, user specification is done like this, yeah. And uh, then you pass the host name and uh, the service. So from here, from that notion, ncrack will get it, right? So it will guess that this is SSH and this is the IP address, uh, I mean, the, the host name for a local uh, loopback interface. And uh, it will start cracking uh, a root user account on this SSH server. Uh, by randomly generating some brute force sequences, okay? So, this is quite dumb. Uh, this is to show you that uh, these templates of timing still uh, are valid for ncrack as well, so it will be really fast for HTTPS to this IP address. Uh, presumably this is a local host, uh, lo local network uh, host, which means that yeah, this is most probably a home router or a default gateway for a local network. However, HTTPS is still quite slow, so using T5 for it, I don't know, maybe not the best idea of the day. Anyway, so just to show you the similarities and differences. And here, uh, this is really a handy one, right? So let's imagine that MapXML has the output of some service scan. Right, so it has some ports, host names, and so on. And this is input from XML that will uh, eat it from the file, and everything will be just there. Okay, so no host name or username or other other notions uh, will be available to this uncrack command. However, it will globally, yeah, this dash G means globally, yeah, set these options globally. It will globally set these options that uh, as far as I remember CL, uh, capital CL will set the maximum number of connections for each service, right, globally, for each service to five and timeout of each uh, login attempt will be set to one hour, timeout, TO, okay. So briefly that's it. 
Uh, now let's see what Hydra is. So Hydra, of course, um, has this brief uh, hint of what it can be uh, in the services department, in the services uh, section, right? And uh, this is a simple example. Login as user, password, uh, capital P, passwords are from this, uh, read from this file, and then brute force FTP, I mean, not brute force, but password guess FTP service at this IP address, okay? And it has a much larger file, a much larger um, help message, which is full of different specific options you can get from Hydra. So, for example, you can get it. Uh, you can get it to run against a single login, or a file containing logins, a single password, and or a file containing passwords, or a colon separated uh, pairs of login and password. So, uh, later in this uh, video tutorial, you will see how to get really personal with the targets, right? So, with the human targets. I mean, in the social engineering engagement, you most probably will get some idea of the people you are dealing with and you will be uh, more familiar with what they do, uh, what they are, what are their uh, hobbies, passions and desires and so on. So you will be able to guess some user-specific passwords, put, in, put their, these guesses into uh, the pairs like this and then save them to files, okay? and then use them to password guess a specific service. Uh, of course, the notion of targets is like this. Uh, unlike in Ancrack, you will have to put everything here, I guess. No, port is optional, port is optional. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go straight to examples, but before, um, let me strike uh, two things. Uh, related to uh, passwords and logins. So, um, brute forcing administrators and roots is not a good idea normally. Yeah, so you never know whether they are locked by default or not. So you will deal with some human logins. Uh, and uh, just just by uh, just by from from a common sense, yeah, you you could uh, guess that two users having the same password is much more likely than uh, two users having uh, the same login name, right? Because the, the latter is virtually impossible. Uh, and uh, this is why when you are password guessing, you have to cycle through, through, pass, uh, through logins, okay? So you, you take one value of a password and you try it against every login name you have. So this is much more realistic scenario and it will get you somewhere much faster than, than the other way around, okay? Because uh, there are shared passwords, there are passwords that are more likely to appear because, yeah, every password leak shows us that uh, some, some passwords, some very short uh, list of passwords is very popular and always making a uh, top 10 or top 100 in every password leak. Okay, so uh, please mind that when you prepare for password guessing attacks. And uh, you, can, you can do that the other way around, but it is not um, really recommended. Okay, so let's uh, make it more realistic. Let's uh, first uh, map our local network. for some Windows hosts, right? <laughs> we know it's there, but is it pinging back? Yeah, so here it is. Now let's uh, and map it with some, some ports we are interested in. Here we are, they are open, yeah. They are closed by default, but in most uh, Windows infrastructures they will be open because file sharing, printer sharing and um, remote desktop connections are the thing for enterprise. 
just to maintain everything and uh, keep all these uh, workstations in order. And uh, what we will do first, let's uh, try to crack the password for this user user uh, via SMB. And uh, one more important thing to mention here is that uh, SMB protocol is not good with dealing with multiple connections. So uh, Hydra, for example, has this uh, dash T, right? That represents the number of tasks run uh, against each target, right? So you will have to do it in one uh, thread, yeah, in one connection. And we will use uh, username user. And uh, yeah, one more important thing. We will have to put some domain name here as well, uh, which is dash M, right? Uh, it's not visible here, but uh, just ju just believe me, right? From, from the larger uh, Hydra help message, we uh, know that uh, dash M stands for um is it really there no i think it's module specific yeah it's smb module specific it's not listed here but again i i'm sharing this <laughs> sacred knowledge with you uh, we will have to do this uh, dash m in order to pass the uh, actual domain where to look for this user because by default it will look at uh, the domain the machine is member is a member of uh, which is not a good idea. We, we are trying to password guess the local user. So that's why we will put this IP address here. <laughs> right, and then we will pick up some passwords from, uh, of course, Seclist's uh, Rocky uh, collection. Okay. And uh, now we have to specify the service, and it will be of course our target machine okay i think we're good to go fire so it takes li really little time a few seconds for it to guess the password okay uh so yeah that's it <laughs> right so according to uh just just due to some protocol specifics SMB is really fast, okay? It just throw in the blocks of data uh, here and there. But uh, running in one thread, it will really slow you down. So when you can, uh, you should do it via RDP. And how to do that exactly? Let's try to do that by ncrack. Okay, so ncrack uh, will... Uh, We'll get a user from us. We will use a password file. Okay, the same one. Okay, and then we will have to specify the number of connections. Let's set it to five. Yeah, how, how can we do that? CL so minimum connection limit is CL and maximum connection limit is capital CL Okay, and uh, we will set it like uh, We'll set, set it after specifying the target. Yeah, because it's basically target specific uh, and uh, We will put RDP Here and then set CL to five and capital CL to five as well. Okay, and let's see what happens. Okay, interesting. What's wrong? Mm, let's put it this way. <laughs> 